how it all began was after I met my husband, he came to visit me like three times in school. I schooled in the University of Ibadan while he, he was at a training at Worry. So he was living in Worry, lived in Worry for like a year. And honestly, I'm not the kind of person that would go and meet you first. Like, why should I go and meet you first? I see girls do that all, all the time and it doesn't make sense to me. A guy that wants to marry you or wants to date you or whatever will now tell you to come and meet him. He's something to come and meet you. He doesn't want to know. He's not something to come and visit you. You'll be the one to go and visit him. No, it didn't work like that for me. Oh. So at this point, I was already liking him. I was already, you know, considering, okay, maybe this one I can date. And for him to come and see me in school, you know, several times without me going to see him, I was like, okay, let me just return the favor. And this was my first time ever, ever traveling to go and see anybody. Like, <laughs> even then, I don't even to go to boys' room to visit them. Like, if you cannot come and see me in my room, and if you want, if you want to ask me out, you cannot come and see me in my room. Sorry, I don't have energy to go to your room so that you, I, I will come to your, to your territory so that you ask me out in your territory. No, you have to come to my own territory to, to, <laughs> to do that. So you know how you will, go, will resume school, but nothing is really happening in school. So instead of me to stay at home, I told my parents that, uh, that even though school has already started, that we have some extra <laughs> god forgive me shout my children will not like to me like this so <laughs> so i told them that we'll have some um like lessons or something like catch up like classes that we used to catch up and stuff and stuff like that tutorial classes here yeah. i told them that we have tutorial classes in school so i need to go back to school but then i already, already planned to go and see um my boyfriend then when i got to school not sure what was really happening in the school i think we're like just Maybe in my block in the hostel, maybe we were just like three people around or something like that. You know how school is now. So I didn't really tell, I think I only told one of my friends about this trip. So just keep that in mind so that before you know, <laughs> just keep that in mind, then you understand why I just said that. I think I told only one friend that of mine. I didn't really tell people that much. Simply because I just didn't want to. I, I'm not that kind of person that would tell everybody my whole business. I just didn't want to tell anybody. So I told only one friend of mine, my very good friend then. I thought I was going to see him in worry. Okay, so I've cut up the lace now. Let me put it on my head and then I'll see how it looks. Um, if you guys hear any humming, it's because Nepa has brought light and the AC is on. So that's the source of the humming. So I'm going to use spirit and a cutting pad to clean my hairline so that the glue can stick well. I'm just going to clean the hairline. Just shut. I'm just cleaning in front of my hairline, not exactly my hairline. Because I don't want spirit on my hair itself. Spirit can dry out your edges and really make them to break. I'm using the ghost bond. This bond is really, really strong. I'm not going to use it. Honestly, guys, this is my first time doing all these things. So don't, don't look at me and think I was as a professional. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, this is my first time. Just that I watched some videos and... I asked myself, I'm going to wink it. I'm not doing too much. That, that's another thing that's helping me. I'm not doing too much. I don't really want to start melting lace and doing baby hair and all that. I'm not doing too much, I beg. So, I think this glue I have is even too much. It's enough, but I'll try and just spread it around. I don't want too much glue. So, I'm using a popsicle stick to just spread the glue around. So, anyway, let me continue with my gist a bit because it's just a sweet stuff. So, I told only one friend of mine that I was going to see him in Worry. So, as I got to school in UI, Ibadan, as I got to school, the next morning, I headed out and took a bus to Worry because from UI, we didn't really have, we didn't even have an airport. So, there was no flight from Ibadan to Worry. So, there was, I had to take a bus. So, I didn't mind. I, because he actually came to see me the three times he came to see me he came he came with boss so I couldn't argue <laughs> so and I said okay I'll go and see him I entered boss got to worry he came to pick me from the park I was excited then we had to go to a supermarket to get some things before we continued I think we also went to buy food so yeah we went to buy food so my dear my dear brothers and sisters <laughs> as we were about entering the supermarket you guys just listen to me. as we were about entering the supermarket i heard my name i heard someone shout ada or call ada and the person called it at a close proximity when i heard it my mind was like i just turned around like i turned around and checked who called me now i didn't hear i didn't see anybody like i said nobody called me but i was sure i heard ada 
I asked him, you to hear somebody calling Ada? He said he didn't hear my name. I was like, okay, well, maybe guilty conscience is worrying me. You know, now guilty conscience. <laughs> when guilty conscience is worrying you, you start hearing your name when nobody is calling you. So we got food, ate, and then he took me to where they were staying. And try the time I was there, my husband was just doing one, although I knew Shah, but he was busy um, teaching his classmates for, an, I think, an upcoming exam. So he was teaching his classmates. So we didn't really spend time much that day. Or oh, I think when I first got there, my father called me. Ada, how are you? How is school? How is this? How is that? Um, I think I said tutorials. I said, yes, yeah, so we started the tutorials. You know, I was really talking. <laughs> I was really talking. Yes, yeah, so we started the tutorials. I didn't put enough glue here. Uh, but the ones here are okay. So I was really talking, oh, yes, yeah, so we started the tutorials. It's going well. This, that, this, that, this, that, this. <laughs> now that I think about it, then. Chai! <laughs> that was very stupid of me. It's going very well. I'm just going to be dead to you. You know, school starts proper, you know, but yeah, we had... I just told one story, Sha. My father said, okay, okay, that's good, blah, 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 blah. Bye, you know. When I was even lying to him, I was feeling very bad. I was feeling very guilty, but I was like... <laughs> it's better to lie than to tell the truth in this case. Or so I thought. So, the next day now, the first I didn't listen to my other much, the next day, the same thing. We just he just come to the room, we just a bit eat, you know. Then he'll go back and tutor people he was tutoring. Whatever. So the next day, while I was in his room, I think I was just playing on my phone or something. My father now called me. This time, when he called me, something just told me, see, something is off. Because it's not like my father to call me the day before, then call me the day after. Like, it's not really like him. He calls, but not that often. I knew that something was off, but <laughs> instead of your girl to just to just confess, I said, no, I was, I must, <laughs> I must fight to the end. <laughs> so, my father now called me and said, how are you doing? I said, I'm fine. Next thing he said is, how is Worry? I said, as I heard, how is Worry? Eh? You know when you have this out-of-body experience? It was as if my soul just flew out of my body and stood beside me and was watching me there, making that phone call. As I just said, how is Worry? I said, sweaty, hot sweat. I said, Worry is fine. My father said, Worry is fine, Abby. Worry is fine. <laughs> So you're worried? Yeah? So you're worried? What did you go and do there? My mom was shouting at the background. I couldn't my mom's voice at the background. Jesus! Jesus! You guys, this is my sound off, but honestly, I come from a very good home. I grew up as a very innocent person. We were, we were, in fact, we were kind of kids growing up. I was pretty much a good girl, okay? A good, at least to my parents, I was a good girl. <laughs> so, so you can imagine their shock when I confirmed to them that I wasn't worried. No one was shouting, Jesus! Hey, I said, hear her crying or something at the background. I was just, I was stunned. I didn't know what to say. I was like, how did my father know? Did my mom dream about it? Because my mom is a dreamer. We used to call her Josephine the dreamer. She dreams about things that are pretty much close to in reality. So I was like, did my mom dream about it? My father now called me back and said, um, who did you go and see them? Who did you go and see them? And I tried telling them, this, this. I don't want to. Phone. Where is he giving the phone? I told him that, and I told my father that he's not around right now. That he's he's with his um, colleagues. But when he comes back, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to give him. I'm going to tell him to call call my dad or something. But dad was shouting. He said, first thing tomorrow, just leave me here." So he said, first thing tomorrow morning, make sure you go back to Ibadan, and I'm coming to Ibadan to see you." My heart there eh, was just. <laughs> I was so scared. I was really, I thought they said, but once they said I'm coming to worry, I'll just faint. I was so scared, I was confused, I didn't know what to do. So, um, my father told me, make sure he calls me when he comes back. Okay, so I just said, okay, sir, okay, sir. But actually, I felt so bad because I felt like I have betrayed my parents, I had disappointed my parents. I really felt bad though, but I, because that was the first time that they really caught me in something that was so embarrassing and you know, disappointing. I imagine they are a good girl, they are a good daughter going to see see man. Man, I was in university, I was going to see man that was already working. But I was still freaking out. I was wondering who called them, what happened. Later on, my husband came back. I tried calling him immediately, but he didn't pick because he was, like I said, he was teaching them. So he didn't pick. 
So later on, he came back to dream. I was like, I saw your miss called. What happened? I told him, guy, sit down, sit down first. Let me just. <laughs> I told him, remember I told you I heard my name yesterday. He was like, hey, I said my father just called you, and my father knows that I've been worrying. He was like, okay. I said my father said you should call him. He said, okay, give me your dad's number. My mind, I was like, okay. I just wanted to act that way. I was expecting him to just start giving one stupid story or the other. And you know, somebody just maybe three hundred the bus and tell me, my dear, you laid your bed, lie on it, you know, however you want. But he was like, no, give me your dad's number. That was what made me feel okay. Maybe this one is actually the one because I didn't expect him to do that at all. And he showed that he was really serious about me. And I gave him my dad's number. And the next day, he called my dad in my presence there. In fact, as the phone was ringing, I think my dad missed the first call or something. As the phone was ringing, and my heart was just pounding. I was sweating. I was so uncomfortable. Because this, this is the first time my, my parents are talking to any guy in relation to a dad like. That what happened? That that Yahoo. <laughs> you know how it is in Nigerian families that you are single until time to get married. It's something like relationship in between. It's either you are single and you're a virgin or you are getting married next week. So <laughs> so that was how it is. That's how it was. So when my um, boyfriend now called my parents, I could hear my dad my dad's voice. I think he put on speakerphone or so. I can't remember, but now I could hear my dad's voice on the other side. My father was like, eh. Hey. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm from this, 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 this. Come on, I'm from Delta. So I'm trying to imagine like, eh, hey, Delta. <laughs> Not like they hate Delta, but you know how Igbo, the tribe people from Anambra, we like to marry ourselves. So my father now asked him, which school did you attend? My mother said I attended the University of, of Benin. That one made me feel okay because my father also went to my father also attended the University of Benin, University of Benin. So I was like, at least let him not be so angry. At least when he gets one also attended his school, he might he might be more lenient. My father now said, So is that how you is that how you are jumping up and down in school? Eh? And you graduated from that school. What did you graduate with? I graduated with a first class in computer engineering. I got, I could sense that my dad just <laughs> I could sense that he just Calm down just a bit, just a bit though. I could sense that first class. My father that said, Is that how you got your first class? Eh? Is that how you got your first class? By gallivanting up and down Nigeria. <laughs> By gallivanting, I could remember this one very well. By gallivanting all up and down Nigeria. Is that how you got your first class? My father that said, No, sir. Eh, so why do you want my daughter to, 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 to why did you take my daughter away from school? To come and visit you for what? Who are you? This one, that one, that one. Where do you walk? He said, Where he walks. My father was like, I was like, okay, you know when somebody expected, you know, really bad responses and what he got was, we are fairly good. So, in fact, very good responses, actually. <laughs> so, I, can't, I mean, I'm not stupid now. I will not, I will not leave a school and go and meet one, one useless person. <laughs> I wasn't desperate in school and I've never been that desperate. So, I mean, the answers were pretty good. <laughs> so, my father now said, I want her to go back to school tomorrow. First thing tomorrow morning, she should be back to school. This one down, down, I'm coming to school to come and see you. Give her the phone. Man, this hair is so soft. So exactly what I wanted. Like, exactly. I shouldn't have put most much here because I really want it to be, to be fuller. So my father and I told me, go back to school tomorrow. I'm coming to school. See you in school tomorrow. I said, yes, sir. As he caught the phone, I was like, oh my god! <laughs> I was shocked. I couldn't sit, I couldn't stand. I said, okay, let us take a stroll. So I remember that stroll was uh, a pretty long stroll. Like, I just didn't want to go back to his room. I didn't want to even do anything. I wanted to just stroll with him. So that was how we strolled. We strolled around. We're now talking, Shad, talking about what just happened, what I'll do next, you know, stuff like that. He was really just talking to me, trying to calm me down. Me, I was freaking out because if anybody knows me, eh, one of the things I don't want to do in this life is to disappoint my parents at all. This glue did not stay anything. Uh, when we now got back to the room, my parents called me. They called my boyfriend directly and told my boyfriend that he would like to see my boyfriend on Sunday. This was like on a weekday, I think it was like a Thursday or something. He told my boyfriend that he would like to see him on Sunday in his house. My boyfriend now said uh, that on Sunday they have a I think they had that exam for that Sunday and they, or something that like they have an, an exam and he won't be able to make it but that he will come the upper week the, sun, the next Sunday after that 
So, um, as in me, eh, things are not happening so fast to me because I was surprised that my husband actually, my boyfriend actually wanted to go and see my parents immediately. I, I was thinking he would just say, no, he can't come, or, or my dear, the kind of kid they go, I don't want to say wahala. But no, he said he was going to come and see my dad. So, I wasn't telling him, why, why do you need to go and see my dad? You don't need to go and see my dad. He was like, you don't have to have to come and see him, I have to go and see him. So I was like, okay, anyway, let's just see how it goes. I didn't even go back to school that the day he said I should go back to school. I think I went back to school like on the weekend or something. So, because my mother was like, after I've suffered to travel and reach here, I will not travel and go back for nothing. No, I must enjoy myself very well. People have already caught me now, so I might as well, <laughs> I might as well have the fun I wanted to come and have here. So, anyway, like, that, the when the time for the, for the visit came, my boyfriend then came to, he came to my school first, so he entered bus all the way from Wari to Ibadan, then both of us now we left from Ibadan to, or to Lagos. So when we got to my parents' house, I was shaking. Throughout the journey, I was okay. But as we got to our clothes, I was shaking. I was walking down to our house, to my parents' house. I was just shaking. I was like, oh, today is the day I'm going to see the Lord. <laughs> so, I said, today is the day I'm going to see the Lord. So I was really shaking. But I was like, you know what? Mama was really calm. Very, very calm. It's always calm anyway in the face of anything. But me, I was shaking. So I was trying to calm me down, you know. When we now entered the house, I just saw my parents. My dad was frowning. My mom was even the one that even tried to greet us. Ah, now welcome, uh, uh, young man. Uh, welcome. My dad was just frowning, sitting down in the parlor. So and I think the way my father was really angry was that before that, a lot of people had come to ask for my hand in marriage. I think I was even 17 when the first person came or something like that. And my father said never in his life did his daughter get married that early and that's that early, I mean 17, 18. And he also wanted, he, he, he said he doesn't want anybody to say they trained his daughter in school. He wanted to see me through school, you know, then he can now hands off. He was like, nobody's going to change daughter in school. Nobody's going to come and, you know, collect his daughter from him at that age, you know. So I think he was now angry that after I've been protecting you from this, you're now going to jump into, <laughs> into something. Of which, to be honest, I really did not want to get married at that point. I wasn't planning to get married at that point. Anyway, so when we got to the parlor, I thought I had to, oh yeah, stand there. So me and my husband stood like eight feet or let's say eight feet away from my dad. My dad was sitting on the parlor couch. My mom was beside him. Me and my husband now, me and my boyfriend stood there. My dad did very well. He wore his backpack and just stood straight like someone that has stolen stolen meat that they caught. <laughs> Or someone that has, or you have two children because I, I, I stood beside him. He told, my, he told me, my dad told me to go and stand beside him. So we stood beside each other there, like children that had stolen sugar and cuts. Anyway, what we did was something similar. <laughs> anyway, but we stood there like two children that had stolen sugar. We were just like this, stood there. My father was now talking, raking, getting, he was like, yeah, we should leave school and come and meet you. I don't care where you walk. I don't care what you graduated with, but you cannot do that my daughter. Don't want her to, to, to amount to something. You know, he was just really angry, Sha. My mom was even the one trying to calm him down. You know, he was really angry. Because in fact, there was something funny that he said. He said, oh, and I told you to come and you actually came. Eh? I told you to come and actually came. I think they didn't expect him to come or something. I don't know. I don't know. I think my parents did not really think it through when they invited him to come, but they were shocked that he actually came. And to be honest, I feel that that's part of what made them start liking him because it showed that he was a responsible person for him to actually come when they told him to come. You know, and also I don't forget part of the gist. How did my parents find out, find out that I went to worry? They said somebody called them. Now that's leading back to that gist about I only told one person that somebody called them on the phone. Saying her name is Uche and that she's looking for Ada, that um, that she wants to speak to Ada. My father was not like to Ada how. He now said uh, that she's in my school and that Ada went to worry. That question doesn't even make sense to me. But anyway, that was what happened. Somebody actually called my parents to tell them that Ada had gone to worry. To this day, I don't know who made that call. I don't believe that it is my the person I told that made that call. I don't believe it because I mean she's not that. No, I don't want to believe she's the one that made that call. And number, I tried to trace the number, I couldn't trust it to anybody, you know. I just don't know who made that call, but whoever you are who made that call, I hope you watch this video. Thank you. I've not had the opportunity to tell you this, but thank you so much for making that call because you actually facilitated the process of me getting married when I did. Like, you made the process so much easier, so much quicker, like, hassle-free, actually, because... 
after all these things that happened, my parents started liking my boyfriend. They decided liking him because they saw him as someone responsible. They already knew everything about his life almost immediately because he had to he had to tell them they asked him questions and he answered straightforward and he was very straightforward with his answers. So basically, they whoever you are, you're the one that you're the reason why I got married to my husband. Thank you so much. <laughs> After my dad finished Reiki, 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 he left. Then my mom now took my boyfriend outside. As it was time for him to go, because my father was like, like he, should just, he should just go. So my, my mom took him outside and started talking to him about to see my father is very. I think she actually started having a soft spot for him straight from when that call happened, when he called them. You know, so they, my mom started talking to him, telling him, you know, my dad is very angry that for now, try and stay away from my daughter. Even if he wants to have anything to do with her, just stay away from her for now. Later on, then you can um, move out, talk, but for right now, stay away from her, let her do her exams, let her graduate, and you know, then we can talk from there. But for right now, stay away from her. Thank you, Nasu. No, <laughs> Okay, then you know the stupid part that now happened. When my mom came back inside now, I now told my parents that um, okay, my husband was already my boyfriend now was outside, was about to leave. So I now told them that, ah, that he's about to leave, but that means so I'm going back to school. My parents were like, huh? <laughs> now that I think of it, then what kind of stupid thing did I go and what was I even thinking? How can you? There was someone you from school for following man. When they're not finished shouting at you and the man, instead of you to stay back and just be sober, you're not gonna tell your parents that you want to go back to school and you go back as the same as you and the man will now go, you will not go to school. As in, I like, I, like, are you for real? <laughs> are you for real? So, when this part happened, my father was so angry. My father was just angry. He said, look, just, just, just look at, just look at this one, just look at this girl. What did she say? Actually, why I said I was at, I knew that they were going to finish me, so I just didn't want them to finish me. I wanted to just run away back to school, but it wasn't possible. But funny enough, they didn't really finish me. After he left, they started advising me, talking to me, you know, advising me and all that and all that. Anyway, so that was it. I don't, want to, I don't want this story to be too long. That was how it happened. I suspect, there's someone I suspect there. I suspect that there was a guy that found that out and now used a girl to call my parents so that I will not know that he's the one behind it, but that guy's story is a story for another day, okay? I had a stalker in school, so this stalker is the person I feel did that, you know, but that's a story for another day. Okay, so guys, that's the final look. So, do I look like a baby girl now? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and also um, turn on the notification bell so that you're notified anytime I post a new video. I'm definitely going to do another, in fact, many more story times have to come, but I'm definitely going to do the one about the stalker that I had in university. So stay tuned for that. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.